In this chapter, we will be studying quadratic functions. In this lesson, we're going to be introducing the quadratic formula. All right, hi everybody. So today we're going to look at the quadratic formula, and this is this is a big deal. Okay, if you think about it, um, all I got to mention is the uh, the Pythagorean theorem, and most of everybody jumps up and says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You know the Pythagorean theorem. You're not likely going to forget it anytime soon. It's something that you worked with a lot. You know it. The quadratic formula is that sort of a thing. Once you look at it, man, you're going to see it pop up everywhere from this point on. It's just a really, really useful formula. And here's, here's where it kind of comes from here. Um, the last couple of lessons we've been looking at, or the last lesson that we looked at specifically, we're talking about solving uh, quadratic equations, finding the roots of quadratic equations. Now, one of the things we kind of hoped that you would have noticed is that if you use the method of completing the square, that works to help you find your roots regardless of whether or not the quadratic, uh, the quadratic function that you're working with or quadratic equation you're working with could be factored or not. You didn't need to know how to factor it to make that completing the square method work. It just worked, period. Now, what that quadratic, uh, sorry, what that completing of the square method builds us is this thing right here, okay? So if you've got, if you've got zero is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? If your quadratic equation looks like this right here, this is the answer to it. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, I'm going to show you where that came from, okay, in just a couple seconds here, because you really should see and, and get a little bit of an appreciation of where this came from here. But what I want you to recognize is that it's it's basically the, the completing the square method because we've just verified that it always works regardless of whether or not you can factor it. And we start with it in this form. Okay. That being said, let's take a look at the derivation of this particular formula and then after the der derivation we'll start to, to use it. Now I know the derivation can be a little dry so I'm going to speed things up just a little bit here. So here we go. So if I was going to complete the square on this, the very first thing that I would do would be to move that plus c term out of the way so I'm not including it in the, in the procedure that I'm about to follow. The next thing I'm going to do is factor out the a from those first two terms. Because when I complete the square, I want the coefficient in front of the x squared or the quadratic term to be 1. So I'm going to factor that out and I will get x squared plus b over ax. Give myself some room so that I can, I can plug in the, the missing part right here. Now once I've done that, I can tell you that two steps down, this is going to end up being x plus b over 2a. And that's going to be all squared. I know that because my the, the term that I get, the second term in my, my binomial factor here, is always going to be half of the coefficient of the linear, the linear expression there. Taking this right here, I would take this term and square it and put it back in. So this would become positive b squared over 4a squared minus b squared over 4a squared. Whoops, I put this right there. Now, in this step right here, I'm going to take that negative term out because I only need those first three terms to factor down to this expression right here. And to get that term out, the way I do that is I multiply it by the leading coefficient here. So when I do that, I'm going to multiply the, the numerator by a. But there's an a squared in the denominator, so this is going to be negative b squared over 4a, not a squared, because the a and the, one of the a's in the denominator are going to cancel, plus c. Now, this is like c over 1. I need common denominator, so I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator here by, by 4a. And so then what I'm going to add here is I'm going to add negative b squared, okay, plus 4ac all over 4a. Good. Now, that puts it in, in the vertex form, if you will. Now what we want to do is we want to solve this for x, okay? So now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flop things over a little bit, because what I'm going to do now, okay, I'm just going to take that, move that over here. I'm going to solve for x here. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move that, that constant term over. So this will be a, x plus b over 2a squared. And what I do is I'm going to switch signs. So this will become b squared minus 4ac all over 4a, okay? Then I'm going to divide by that a, bring that over. So it's going to be x plus b over 2a squared. It's going to equal b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Okay. Now the next thing I gotta get rid of here is that square root. I'm gonna do that by taking the square root of both sides. So it's gonna be x plus b over 2a. It's gonna equal the positive or the negative square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now, I can, however, simplify this a little bit because I can actually take the square root of the denominator here. So this will equal plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? Now I'm gonna bring this b, uh, this, this positive b over 2a over. So this will be x is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then because the denominators here are the same, okay, because the denominators are the same, I can combine the numerators. So x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's the quadratic formula. All right, now that you've seen the quadratic formula, the derivation of it, and don't worry about it, you're not going to get asked to, to repeat that, at least I don't think you would. Okay, now we're just going to use it. That's really the most important part here. So we're going to use it right now to find the, the roots of each of the following here to the nearest hundredth. Okay, now I'll show you how you use your calculator to, to do that in just a little bit here. So I want to make sure that you can use your calculator as well. Okay, so we need this to be in the form ax squared uh, plus bx plus c is equal to zero. It is 
as long as my A value here is 5, my B value is negative 7, my C is negative 1. So X, according to the quadratic formula, will be negative B, which is negative 7, plus or minus the square root of. Now, what I'm about to do here, I'm going to just talk about this. We, we have, haven't used the quadratic formula up to this point. The very first question we're going to look at, I'm going to identify one of the most common errors that gets made here. I need to put the B and square it here. Now, the B is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is positive 49. Now, if you, if you write it like this, you have already done it wrong. Okay? Writing it like that is already wrong. Odds are really good when you go to your calculator, you will write it, you will type it in like that, and it's wrong. Because B is negative 7. But here, what is it that you're squaring? I want you to think about that carefully. You're only squaring the 7 here and then you're throwing a negative out front. If you want that to be negative 7 squared, you need to put parentheses around that. You must put parentheses around that. Now, if that's obvious to you, that's awesome. Uh, but I suspect for a lot of people watching this, that's not obvious to you, at least not right off the bat, and it's something you're going to have to be very careful of. Okay, um, as a teacher, I see this, I see the quadratic formula come by all the time and almost always when there's a mistake there, it's because students aren't putting brackets around that and they're getting an answer that doesn't make any sense. Now it's going to be minus 4 times A times C, negative 1. This is all going to be over 2 times A. So negative of negative 7 will be positive 7 plus or minus the square root of, okay, this is going to be 49. And then minus 4 times 5 times negative 1, the negatives will cancel. I'm going to get positive 20. So this will be 69 over 10. Okay? Now, let's enter that into our calculator and get the, uh, the decimal values here. And I'm going to, I can't go down any further. I'm just going to have to go over here. So here we go. 7. Now, actually, sorry. What I should do here first is I should put brackets around the numerator. So 7, and we'll do plus the square root of 69. Now, depending on what version of the calculator you've got, if the calculator put a set of uh, parentheses right here, you're going to have to close the parentheses. But if your calculator is doing what mine's doing, you're going to have to press the right arrow to get out from underneath uh, the radical. Okay, close the brackets for the numerator divided by bracket. Now, I don't actually have to put brackets around the denominator because I already know what the answer down there is 10. But if you're going to write that as 2 times 5, then you must put parentheses around it so the calculator knows to do that separately. And I'll press enter right now, and one of my answers to the nearest hundredth is going to be 1.53. But there's another answer there, and the reason why there's another answer is because it was 7 plus or minus. Okay, Either one of those would work. Now, on my version of the calculator, I can simply press the up arrow twice. It'll highlight that, that expression, and I can press enter to pull it back down. If you don't have this version of the calculator, if you press second, and then enter, what it'll do is it'll take that expression and, and drop it back down again, whatever you entered in, and then you can go back and just change that positive to a subtraction, okay? And there we go. Now my, my other answer here is going to be negative 0.13. Please don't put parentheses around that. This isn't a point. This isn't an x comma y. These are two separate x values that both satisfy this equation, okay? Now, one of the things we want to be careful of as we move forward here is the radical, okay? Because remember, there are restrictions on a radical. You can't take the square root of a negative, okay? That's going to have some implications for us. What we can do here, okay, what we can do with that radical here is going to have some, some interesting effect on, on the kinds of answers that we get. Let's keep moving here. Let's, look, let's take a look at this next one here. Whoops. Sorry, I'm going to have to rotate this a little bit. Yoink. There we go. Okay, next one here. Now, before I start solving this, I could use 1 half, negative 1 and negative 5 halves as my A, B, and C values. But actually, I'm far too lazy for that. I'm going to multiply through by 2 to change the equation to something that I'm a little bit happier with. Okay, I don't like the fractions in there. Although, if I'm using the quadratic formula, it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever uh, whether I've got the fractions in there or not. I'll just let the calculator handle that. But here, now my A value is 1, my B value is negative 2, my C value is negative 5. So x would equal negative 
of the b plus or minus the b value squared, bearing in mind that that b has got to be in parentheses there, particularly if it's negative. If it's positive, not a big deal. Okay, not a big deal. That shouldn't make any difference whatsoever, but if it's negative, that will make a difference. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, negative 5. All over 2 times 1. And it's important here that it's all over 2 times 1. Not just the, not just the radical here, but the whole thing. Okay, now, uh, you know what, I'm going to try to simplify this right down here so that you can see the connection here. Negative of negative 2 is going to be positive 2, plus or minus. Okay, negative 2 squared is 4, and then that's going to be a positive 20, so this will be root 24 all over 2. Okay, so 2 plus or minus root 24 over 2. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite that over here. 2 plus or minus root 24 over 2. Now something that you should know here, it's going to be very tempting to want to cancel out, uh, to divide out, for example, the 2, say, ah, 2 over 2 is, is 1. You can't do that unless you do it to both. Okay. Now I used to teach this a little bit differently here, but I've, I've had a little bit of success recently reminding people that if you're going to do that kind of a division here, you simply have to distribute that to both. So you got to make that 2 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 2. So now 2 over 2 is 1, plus or minus. Now, okay, I cannot divide 24 by 2. Can't do it. Okay, can't do it. Because this isn't a 24, it's the root of 24. However, the square root of 24, let's go up here. Let's go up a little bit higher here. Remember that the square root of 24 that's going to be the same as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. If you break 24 into its prime factors, and bear in mind that, a, that what a, a square root does is it forces us to look for pairs of factors, and for every pair of factors inside, I can pull one out. So this would be the same as 2, because I can pull a 2 out there, root 6. So down here, my root 24 becomes 2 root 6 over 2, and then now I can cancel the twos here, so I get 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. Now, going to my calculator, that's, that's a little bit easier to figure out than the, the previous question here. So this will be 1 plus the square root of 6. All right, uh, so 3.45. Okay, now I'll show you how my calculator works here. Yours might be the same if I just go up, up, oops, to there. Press enter, come back a little bit, put a negative sign in there, and then negative 1.45. Okay, wonderful. Now please, again, please make sure you don't put parentheses around that. That's not a point. Those are two answers, two separate answers. Okay, now we're going to solve the next set of equations here. Again, i got to twist this a little bit. Uh, we're going to solve this next set by, by factoring and then by using the quadratic formula here. And I, I want you to notice what's going on here. There's a little, a little trick, okay, that you can utilize uh, later on in this course that, that you might find useful here. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to solve by factoring. Now, I appreciate the fact that 3 is a prime factor, so there's only one way to break that apart. That's going to be 3x and x. Done. 2 also is a prime factor. So it can either be 1 and 2 or 2 and 1. I want there to be a 5 in the middle. So let's, tr let's try this, 2 and 1. So that would be 3x times 1 is uh, 3x. 2 times x is going to be 2x. So th uh, 3x and 2x, there's my 5 right there. But I need this product here to be negative, which means one of them's got to be negative, one of them's got to be positive. Well, I only got the 5x by adding two positives together. So that that can't be it. So it's got to be 1 and 2. If it's factorable at all, it's got to be 1 and 2. Now, uh, the product, sorry, the sum here is positive. So that means the, the larger product must have been positive, And then this one must be negative. There it is. Okay. So there's my, my expression factored. And so now, because this product is equal to 0, either 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. Not simultaneously, but, but either one of those will work here. Bring the 1 over by adding it. And so x could be 1 third. 
bring the 2 over x could be negative 2. Those are my two solutions. Okay? Now we're going to try the exact same question. This time we're going to use the quadratic formula to, to do this. And I, I want you to pay attention to what happens with the radical here, okay? Because the radical is going to give us some information, or at least I want you to see a connection um, that you might find useful uh, later on. Okay, so first of all, a is going to be 3, b is going to be 5, c is going to be negative 2. So x is going to equal negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared. Now in this case, I don't need parentheses because it's positive, okay? There, there is no negative to get rid of. I'm fine minus 4 times a times c, negative 2. That's all over 2 times 3. Okay, wonderful. This is going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, okay, what do we got here? We got 5 squared, 25. Okay, so that's going to be negative 12 times negative 2 is going to be positive 24. So 25 plus 24 is going to be 49 all over 6. Now, Notice that the square root of 49 is, is a number that I can, I, can t I, mean, I can tell you what it is right now. It's, it's 7, okay? I know what the square root of 49 is. And I also know that this particular function is factorable. Now look up here, these previous questions that we did up here. When I got this radical right here, it was the square root of 69. I got two answers, but they were kind of crazy decimal answers there. But I didn't know what the square root of 69 was. Over here root 24, well, I simplified that down to 2 root 6. I didn't know what the square root of 6 was. Got crazy decimals here. I couldn't have factored that thing. But here, I do know what the square root of, of that 49 is. I know that it's 7. I was able to factor this one. So that's just a little note here. Okay, If, if that b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, okay, you can factor. Okay, If b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, you could factor. You might not see what the factors are right away, but you could factor. Now, negative 5 plus 7 okay, is going to be 2, and 2 over 6 is 1 third. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12, divided by 6 is negative 2. And so there's, there are my roots there, and that's what I found before, 1 third and negative 2. Now, on a related note, let's say that, let's say, for example, that I had asked you to factor this right here. And you're like, oh, man, I, I don't know. I can't see what the factors are. That's, that's a little hard here. Well, now you've got a tool. You could use the quadratic formula to get you down to here. Now, if, if I had asked you to factor it, you would have gotten to this point where you would have said x is equal to 1 third, x is equal to negative 2, bring the 3 up, bring that 2 over, bring the 1 over. Th those are my factors. And then my an your, the answer here to this, if I had asked you to factor that, would have been 3x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. That's what the answer is when it's factored. Anyway, this just as a little aside here, you could have done that. Okay, now... Let's use the quadratic formula, and we're going to solve these other two. Uh, well, we're going to solve just a, a handful more here. So here, a is 1, b is negative 6, c is 7. So x is going to equal negative of negative 6 plus or minus the square root of, and now because that's negative, I'm going to put those in parentheses, negative 6 squared, 4 times a times c, all over, 2 times a. So it's going to be positive 6 plus or minus the square root of. Now, that, negative 6 squared is going to be 36. And then this is going to be minus 28. So it leaves us with 8 over 2. Whoops, sorry, can't see that. Uh, I can simplify the square root of 8. 8 is 2, two times 2 times 2. There are three 2's in there, so I can pull one out. So 6 plus or minus 2 root 2. All right, I hope you remember doing that from an earlier course. Whoa, why did I put an 8 down there? I was just so happy to have that 8 there. Sorry, that's got to be a 2. Now, I can distribute that 2 to both of those terms. Make this 6 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 over 2. I, I can, only, can only do that division if I distribute it to both. I can't just distribute it to 1. That doesn't make any sense. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
And then it's only the twos that are outside the radical that I can, I can divide there. So two divided by two is one, so that becomes three plus or minus the square root of two. And this is an exact form, okay? Sometimes there's a bit of confusion here. People think that if I go to the calculator and press it as a decimal, I can get an exact form. Well, okay, then where do you round it? Like, does it become more exact if I go to more decimal places? No, the misunderstanding there, you're confusing exact with, with precise, uh, with a higher level of precision. This is exact. It doesn't get any better than just root two. I know exactly what, what root two is. As soon as you start throwing decimals in there, you're gonna have to round, and then that, that throws things off. That's what it means by exact form. Whoops, where'd my next question go? There it is, gotta come into focus, okay. To solve this one, let's bring the, the negative 2x squared over. So this will be 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. a is 2, b is negative 4, c is, is negative 3. So x will equal the negative of negative 4 plus or minus the square root. Need to put parentheses around the negative 4 because it's negative. Okay, minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Okay, so negative of negative 4, positive 4, plus or minus, what do we got here? That is going to end up being, negative 4 squared is going to be 16, plus, plus 24. So it's going to be the square root of 40 over 4. Now before you start thinking, oh, I'll just cancel 4s. No, no, you won't. First of all, because this is in a radical, I can't do that. Okay. In fact, the best I can do out of this is take out a... Um, I can take out a 2, so this would become 4 plus or minus, think about 40 here, it's going to be 2 times 2, sorry, 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So i got a pair of 2's I can pull out, so it becomes 2 root uh, 10, really, over 4. Can I cancel the 4's out with everything? Well, no, but I can do this. I can go 4 over 4 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 4. That's equal to 1. And then here I can make this, sorry, plus or minus root 10 over 2. Now, that might be an answer that you're, that is acceptable. Or you might be required to get common denominators, in which case 1 is just going to be 2 over 2. So this would be 2 plus or minus root 10 over 2. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, my gosh, I could have got there a little bit easier. I could have got there from up here. Yeah, yeah, some of you would do this. Some of you would recognize that, okay, yeah, I can't cancel the four, like I can't just cancel those fours and get away with it. But what I could do is, is factor out a two out of the numerator, two plus or minus root 10 over four, and then the two and the four, will. Uh, I have a common factor there that I can then cancel. So I get two plus or minus root 10 uh, over 2. That's another way that I could have gotten that answer. It just depends on how comfortable you are with algebra. And I'm trying to, to make this little video here so that I'm, I'm trying hard to kind of hit everybody where, wherever you might be. Okay, let's do a few more. Okay, I know this is getting long, but, but yeah, oftentimes with the questions like this, more exposure is better. Okay, same thing. A is 1, B is negative 5, C is 7, so this is going to be X is equal to the negative of negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 1 times 7 all over 2 times 1. Okay, so negative of negative 5 will be positive 5 plus or minus the square root of, okay, here we go. This is going to be 25, okay, positive 25 minus 28. That's negative 3 all over 2. Well, now notice what happens here. And I'd mentioned this before, but here we're really seeing a good example of this. I can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real value. Okay, so all of a sudden I'm seeing, hey, hey, this thing has got no, no solution. No real solution at least. Okay, maybe I should put that there. No real solution. It's got imaginary numbers, but no real solution. Now let's think about what the heck that could mean. If you think back to what we looked at in the last chapter here, we were talking about how roots, zeros, and x-intercepts all basically mean the same thing. So when I'm trying to find the roots of an equation or the solutions to an equation, that's like finding the x-intercepts of the graph. And what this means is 
there are no x-intercepts. How could a quadratic have no x-intercepts? And the answer is it might look something like that, where it doesn't even touch the x-axis. That's what we're looking for. Okay, kind of interesting. Okay, but we get that information. We get that, that direction from what's going on underneath that radical symbol. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, again, I got to have everything over to one side and have this thing equal to zero or I can't solve it. Okay, whether I'm talking about factoring or the quadratic formula, it's got to be equal to zero. So a is three, b is negative six, c is two. So x will equal the negative of b plus or minus the square root of negative, sorry, of negative six, but b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. All right. Negative of negative six, positive six, plus or minus the square root of, okay, that's gonna be positive 36, okay? Minus four times three is 12, times two is 24, so it's gonna be 36 minus 24, it's gonna be 12, all over six. <coughs> now, once again, and I think the reason why this question's here is to check and see how anxious some of you are to cancel. I can't start, I can't cancel those sixes and then the six and the 12 there, I can't do that. I can't just cancel the six and the six. If anything, I have to distribute that six to both of those terms to get six over six, plus or minus root 12 over six. Now, which is gonna be the same as one, plus or minus. Well, I cannot cancel 12 over the six there and get two, because this is not 12, it's root 12. But 12 is two times two times three, so there's a pair of twos there, I can take that out. And then there's this, this six over, sorry, two over the six there. So this is like one plus or minus root three over three. Okay, oops, can't see that. And that's, that might be good enough for an answer. If you need to leave it as common denominators, this would be three over three. So that would be three plus or minus root three over three. That's one way you could write that. Now, I could have got there a little bit quicker if I came up here. Simplified that that uh, radical right away here by taking out that two. Whoops, and then from here, in the numerator, in the terms of the coefficients, I could take out the common two, and that would get me three plus or minus root three all over six, and then the two and the six can be simplified. Three plus or minus root three over three. So either way, I can get that same final answer. Doesn't really matter how I approach that. So one of two ways there that you could go about doing that. Uh, now, whoops, one other question here, quadratic. Uh, and the reason why this one's here is sometimes it throws people off when, when terms are missing. And I don't want to do that. I don't want that to happen to you. Notice that the A was always the quadratic, uh, sorry, the, the coefficient of the quadratic term. B was always the coefficient of the linear term and C was always the constant. Well, there is no constant, which means that that term is going to be zero. So X is going to equal negative of the b value plus or minus the square root of the b value and because it's negative it's squared minus four times a times c now bear in mind what that c is going to do it's going to take that whole term and make that zero and then this will be over two a so simplifying this that's going to be positive seven plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 10 and I said this before, I'll say it again here, because that ends up being a perfect square, I probably should have been able to factor that. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you that in a second. This gets you seven plus or minus seven over 10. And so my two answers are seven plus seven, okay, it's gonna be 14, divided by 10, okay. Uh, 14 over 10, they're each divisible by two, it's gonna be seven fifths. Or I could do seven minus 10 is zero, divided by 10 is gonna be zero. So those are the answers I get with the quadratic formula, but because this thing was a perfect square, I should have been able to factor that. And the truth is, yeah, I could, because there was a common factor of x there. I could have made that 5x minus 7 and gotten the same roots right away. Okay? All right, now we're going to take a quick look at a word problem here. Uh, Leah wants to frame an oil original uh, painted on canvas measuring uh, 50 by 60. Okay, so 50 by 60. Before framing, she places the painting on a regular mat so that a uniform strip of the mat shows on all sides. Okay, so this little strip here is going to be X units wide all the way around. Okay, 
the area of the mat is twice the area of the painting. So how wide uh, is the strip of exposed mat showing on all sides of the painting? Okay. Okay. So the area of the mat is twice the area of the painting here. Well, okay, the area of the painting, okay, 60, 60 by 50 is going to be uh, 3,000 there. We're going to multiply that by 2. So we know that the area there is going to be 6, or the, the number we're looking for is 6,000. Now, the area of the mat, okay, the area of the mat, to get that, we're going to take the area of the big square, we're going to subtract the area of the inside square. So the area of the big square is going to be, well, it's going to be 50 plus 2x's on either side. So that's 50 plus an x plus an x multiplied by 60 plus 2x's, an x here and an x here. So that's, that's the area of the big, uh, big square or rectangle, I should say. And then we're going to subtract, okay, the area inside there. So subtract that 3,000. Okay, that's gone off the chart there. Okay, so there we go. So there's our equation. Notice that this isn't, one of, again, one of those maximum minimum problems uh, because I gave you what the area was that we were looking for. It said the area of the mat is twice the area of the painting. Okay, so now let's bring that 3,000 over. So 9,000 is going to equal, when I multiply this out, I'm going to get 3,000. That's going to be plus 100x uh, plus 120x plus 4x squared. All right, I've only got one variable in here. I've got to solve for it. I'm going to bring that 9,000 over, and I'm going to reorder this. So this will be 4x squared, because I like having the squared term first, uh, plus 220x, and that's going to be minus 6,000. Now, unless I'm greatly mistaken here, each of those numbers is divisible by 4, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to divide every term here by 4. Now, 0 divided by 4 is 0. This is going to become x squared. Uh, that'll become 55x minus 1,500. Okay. Now, maybe I can factor this. Maybe I can't. I'm going to jump right to the quadratic formula here. So x is going to equal negative of that middle term, plus or minus the square root of 55 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Let's simplify that. So negative 55 plus or minus the square root of, okay, well I'm going to go to my calculator here, 55 squared minus 4 times, I'm not going to multiply by the 1, but I will multiply by that, uh, sorry, that negative 1,500. So it's going to get me 9,025 inside there all over 2. Okay, this gives me two answers here. Now the question was uh, asking to show me the, the size, sorry, the x to the nearest centimeter here. Okay, so that's going to be negative 55 plus the square root of 9,025 divided by 2. Now one of my answers, when I went to my calculator, one of the answers I got was 20. Now the other way of doing that would be to go negative 55 minus the square root of 9,025 and then divide that by 2 and I get negative 75 is my other possibility. Except that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I can't have a, a width there of negative 75 centimeters. So therefore the mat is 20 centimeters wide. That's the answer we were looking for.